Can we talk about how stupid that thing was on SmackDown where Seth invaded Edge's house? Um, I mean, you can. I mean, it's like... Um... <laughs> it was just ridiculous. And the most ridiculous thing about it is he invades the house, and then we see Edge backstage, and he's frantically calling Beth, who... Her and the children are not home at, like, you know, 9 o'clock at night or whatever. They went to the grocery store. <laughs> yeah. On Friday night at 9 o'clock, they all went to the grocery store. So well, they... Well, then, I mean, if... if if Edge was going to be on TV, wouldn't you think they would go to the grocery store or else? Instead of you watching keep SmackDown? Him. Yeah, sure. Yeah, you don't, want to, you don't want him watching SmackDown because the last time they, he was on SmackDown, he got his head kicked in. So, you know, you probably would do something to just get them away from the TV. Well, you know, you could always just shut that TV off, too. Be my uh, yeah, but then they'll sneak. Then they'll sneak and watch it. Mm-hmm. Well, one way or the other, he invaded the house, and then Edge said that people were on the way, and he was calling like his his friends, and even Pat McAfee is like, "Stop calling your friends. Call the cops." Yeah, but his friends are badass, Daniel and David. Well, we don't know that because there was no follow up whatsoever. We never well, saw any of it again. Well, Daniel and David are under contract to the other promotion, so it's like they can't go there. Mm-hmm. I mean, they can't be on the TV, so that's the only way they could do it. Is it has that's to be- the Daniel and David he was talking to. Daniel, um, Daniel Wheeler and David Harwood. Wow. Yeah. You didn't know that? No, I did not know that. Yeah, that's who he was talking about. They they all live in Asheville. They're all buddies. Mm. So yeah, he, he, so they're he, not, and they're not allowed on. They're not allowed on WWE te- television. Wow, how about so? That? So it had to be dark. The the beatdown. Man, what or a chasing shoot. him out had to be dark. Hmm. Well, well, I, I never do, thought do, that the invasion would come to this. Yeah, and David, the forbidden David, door has been opened. Yeah, and David wrote on Twitter that he's on the way. So he was on the way. Wow. Yeah. How about that. Yeah. Man. Well, like they're doing they're doing they're doing a secret angle. They didn't want anyone to know about it. It's definitely they, a secret angle, and it would be with a team that has secret tag team rules. So that makes sense. <laughs> so now what? Where does this ta- go now? What? Uh, where it goes this, to? That's it. It? Go, it goes to Raw. It's going to go somewhere. Well, obviously they're going to wrestle at Crown Jewel. You know, or not obviously. I, home I mean, I mean if this was a, if this lame. if this was a normal promotion, I would say that they're going to wrestle at Crown Jewel, and I actually believe that they are. But you know, I mean, there's always you always have to go with WWE. Well, it, th- th- what they do because with these pay per views, it's not Vince just can, that. But they're going to change his mind. Vince can change his mind tomorrow. It's not even changing his mind. They build up these matches to do them on TV before the pay per view. This has been happening all year. Yeah, it'll or, happen. Or they're building it up for the pay-per-view, and then he'll panic and put it on TV. That happens, too. I bet the guys that have their match pulled from the very lucrative Saudi show and put on television for free are pretty thrilled about that. I don't think that, I think, I don't think it matters in their paycheck. They're going to get paid the same either way. I mean, because they're going to be on the show. It's not like these guys are going to be off the show. I mean, Edge is going to be on that show. I'm sure Seth Rollins is going to be on that show. I'm not. I shouldn't say I'm sure, but I would not say I'm sure. I wouldn't say I'm sure about it. Because those shows, those those matches that get moved to the Friday before the pay per view, they don't end up on the show. Yes, but I don't know exactly how the. I mean, f- for most of the guys, there is a Saudi bonus as, as long as they're on the show. So, and and I think that the top guys have like. At least some of the top guys have it, like Lesnar, have it like actually in the contract. So if they're pulled from the show, they're still paid for the show. So I don't know what Edge's deal is. I mean, Edge has a real lucrative deal, so I would think that they would want him on the show. And Rollins is actually one of the higher paid guys, too. But again, who knows? Well, we got uh, Crown Jewel coming up, and the announced matches so far, we have two of them. Roman Reigns, Brock Lesnar for the WWE Universal title, and they announced Becky, Bianca, and Sasha. Triple threat for the SmackDown women's title. Yeah, and obviously the the one match that is also going to be there is Lashley and uh, Bill Goldberg, because that one won't be put on TV, because... um, Goldberg Goldberg does have a specific deal when it comes to the Saudi shows that are very very lucrative and he if you if you were going to pull his match to put it on TV um he would not be happy whatsoever for at at that cuz that's that's millions of dollars of difference so that would you know it's not like the other guys where it really doesn't make a difference they're going to get paid the same as long as they're on the show so he got he's got to be on the show unless they have some battle royal they put Goldberg in so or whatever they do, you know. Any other SmackDown thoughts you didn't talk about the other night? Um, I thought that the segment with Brock Lesnar 
and um, talking about how Paul Heyman got him to be a free agent so he can be on both brands anytime he wants. And then Paul has his head covered and the Usos and Roman Reigns now aren't trusting Paul. So you don't know if Paul is like a double agent or if Brock is messing with Paul to mess with Roman Reigns' head. You don't know which it is. I think that that's a really good storyline. So on Monday's Raw, the, <coughs> the Usos are getting drafted on Monday. And Paul's job is to make sure they're drafted on SmackDown. And if they are not drafted on SmackDown, the Usos are to leave Paul for dead. Yes, yeah, so so. we've got a threat, a th two threats of death in the last week now. So this is no longer a banned word. Um, they didn't say kill. They said leave him for dead. So <laughs> well, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Leave him for a dead is a pretty serious threat. Yeah, I've, I've seen kill as a banned word, but I've never seen leave him for dead as a banned phrase. Mm. So, um. Obviously, well, we it's had a not. terroristic threat on Raw and SmackDown, and we've had the word shit on multiple shows, so it seems like there's been a change. Well, there's definitely been a change. They're trying to get a younger audience. I mean, that's By pretty clear. By threatening to kill people? Yeah, that's... Hey, look, that's... The, I'm not saying it's going to work, but yeah, that's part of the idea. They want to be more edgy. So, um, I mean, I... Whatever. We'll have to see what works. I mean, that's... If everyone had a magic wand, everybody would be doing great. They don't have the magic wand, and they're trying to find what the magic wand is. And for Vince, the magic wand is 1998, and so he's, or 1999. So he's trying to find, go back to those years. Unfortunately, what he doesn't realize is the magic wand in 1999 does not work in 2021. You need a different magic wand. You need a 2021. He needs to buy a new magic wand, or he needs to find someone who has a magic brain uh, that's in 2021. And um, if, if he brought him in, the guy would probably be talking a different language than Vince, and Vince wouldn't understand it anyway, I don't think. So that's what we got. We, You know, what can I say? They don't have their fingers on the pulse, and they're trying to find the pulse. That's what they're doing right now. They're trying to find the pulse, and, and I'm sure there's plenty of people telling Vince that he does have his fingers on the pulse because they're all worried for their jobs, and but he doesn't. You know, and, and there's signs and, you know, some of the signs that are out there. Well, I mean, look, I sh I'd say like Vince will recognize, you know, Vince does recognize it. I mean, every week he throws something. I mean, ob obviously on Raw that the last minute we're probably going to have three cage matches or nine title matches or something on Monday because the draft didn't do giant numbers on, on Friday. Or maybe he'll count on, maybe he'll think the draft will do good enough. And then next week will be the week that, uh, who knows. You know, I mean, they're just what they're doing and uh, whatever. We had the SummerSlam, uh, one of the main events, the uh, the Sasha Banks and Bianca Belair match announced the day of the show, which yeah. I didn't even see on social media. So I just turned on SmackDown and I was like, what? And then sure enough, they did that match in the main event for free with zero days build. Yeah, and but it was just a TV match. It wasn't like it was. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't like it was an all-out match. They had a gimmick finish. You know, it wasn't... Well, it was 13 minutes with a pin. <laughs> yeah, but it was a That's gimmick finish. something. Fin yeah, but the focus of the thing was Becky Lynch and Charlotte Flair. Yeah, it's all it was fine, all but my point is, if you're going to do a, a match that was supposed to be on SummerSlam that you did not deliver, I mean, you probably should, you know, advertise it for a week. Or at least on Raw. What if they decided the day of the show? Well, I know they did, but I mean, get their act together. That's my point. I realize it's well, Vince. Vince, ridiculous. You know, Vince is Vince is making decisions at the last minute based on you know different things, and those different things you know aren't always there a week ahead of time. I mean, like you know the the you know I mean he's making he's making momentary decisions and things change on a daily basis. So this one was you know he didn't I, I'm if he did, if he had a week to build for if he had a week of build for it he could have done it but he probably didn't. Probably came up with it the day of the show, and that's, and that's how long it was advertised. So the show, this is the overnights, by the way, so we'll get the uh, final number in the next day or two. But uh, barely up from last week. Yeah, yeah. The um, It didn't, you know, again, like the, the, the real number is the one that comes out tomorrow. But, um, I mean, it wasn't, yeah, it does not look like it was any kind of a big gain. But last year's draft didn't do especially well either. No. You know, the draft, 
previously always did very, very well. But it's burned out. And, you know, I watched the show. Like, last year's draft show, I was at that show live. And it was just, it wasn't really that entertaining of a show. And then this year's show, I mean, they, I mean, there was some stuff. That, I mean, they again, said some I, names. That's all it yeah. was. I mean, the way the draft, the, the way the draft itself is done, and it surprises me because that's one of the things that they could do really well. I mean, even even with even with the kind of like um, no real names and everything, but they just go out there and have you know Adam Pierce and and Sonya Deville read names and you know you could you could really build a good draft show, but they just don't. I think maybe they think that it wouldn't that it wouldn't draw ratings that way by doing you know doing it. I mean, the first year when they had all those you know when first year on on Fox. When they had the the Fox robot and all that in the war rooms, I mean that was really lame. So they didn't come back and do that. But there's still ways of doing it, and um, it's still. I mean, it wasn't really that exciting or anything. And then the matches are just kind of thrown there. I mean, like, uh, you know, the Carmella and Liv Morgan match never happened. Not that I'm complaining about that. They just it just didn't. And um, they had a nice. The eight man tag was kind of just thrown there, and it was good action. And then, you know. Um, Happy Corbin and Owens felt like, uh, you know, it was just a way to get um, Madcap Moss over to help Happy Corbin and put them together as a unit. And I don't know if Owens is going to switch brands or what. You know, it wasn't, uh, you know, it, you, you could look at it and say that oh, he probably will, but, uh, you know, maybe they'll just keep that program going because Corbin doesn't need an opponent. So the overnight number was 2.12 million, up 1.6%, which is actually below the 10-week average. The second hour did worse than the first hour, which actually almost never happens on SmackDown. It's no, that happens rare. a lot on SmackDown. It happens a lot. Uh, the second hour is usually stable or up a little bit. This was usually, down 4%. It, it, used, it used to be up. It used to be, the second hour used to be down almost all the time. Um, it did change a little bit with when they when they would save reigns for the second hour, and sometimes it would go up. But that doesn't really mean anything. And on a draft show that was that's kind of so so, I would have expected that. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got twelve thousand episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website wrestlingobserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.